while everyone was distracted by P. Diddy, which is something major and big and plays a huge part in what's happening and going on. Let me say this. Joe Biden said is he, if he has to step down, he wants Barack Obama to step forward. Because like how though? and Joe Biden has a weird bromance. Remember, Barack Obama already did two terms. He can't get reelected again. Trump did one term. If Obama takes the seat at any time before election, or somehow Trump can't be reelected, somehow, some, some way, some magically mysterious, and Barack Obama takes position, you already know what the hell time it is. Period. The solar eclipse is on April 8th. They want to match the energy that is about to transpire. And they feel Barack Obama is the best way to go. Oh man, we in some we in some shit right now. We are in some shit right now, man. We are in some shit right now. Major things is happening. There's a reason why there's so much big, huge distractions going on. Election is coming up. Solar eclipse is coming up. Did y'all not see what's going on in Israel? Okay? Israel looking to come at the United States. Everybody is about to turn on Israel, United States, everyone. Oh my gosh. Y'all better get ready and buckle y'all seats. Heading towards election April 8th going forward. Be on the lookout. Don't go to work that day, I said. School. It's not going to be open that day. I'm telling you for a reason. And they tell you to be aware of demon face syndrome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That. We're about to see what's going to happen. Buckle your seatbelts and stay prayed up. The solar eclipse on April the 8th, 2024. It seems as if now everyone knows about it. They got a breakdown for it. They know what's going to happen. But we know the world is under a delusion. Truly, they don't know what is going to happen. They don't know what's going on. Only a few. All right. And we know that judgment is coming, not just to America, but the world. OK, because okay. many are under false doctrine as if America is going to be destroyed. And we're going to see that this sign means something different from what the world believes. We already know that the eclipse from 2017, the one that is approaching, is going to make an X across the United States. Now it's said that this X is located near the town of Carbondale, Illinois. And this little section is also called Little Egypt. Why is that important? Because we know from Revelation 13 that the world is going to worship and wander after the first feast. And the first feast was Pharaoh. He was the first beast to reign over the children of Israel. Now, if you continue on the path of this eclipse, it's said to cross over eight towns called Nineveh. Why is that important? Because many are connecting that to Jonah, but I'm going to show you something different. Jasher chapter 81, verse 40. And when the children of Israel had entered the sea, the Egyptians came after them. And the waters of the sea resumed upon them, and they all sank in the water. And not one man was left except the Pharaoh, who gave thanks to Yahuwah and believed in him. Therefore, Yahuwah did not cause him to perish at that time with the Egyptians. And Yahuwah ordered an angel to take him from amongst the Egyptians, who cast him upon the land of Nineveh. And he reigned over it for a long time. Hopefully now it's starting to make sense because this is a sign that the beast is coming to reign from America over the whole world. Because Daniel chapter 7 verse 23 says that America is the beast kingdom. Passing over Nineveh eight times also is symbolic of something because we know from Revelation that the eighth beast is coming was also the seventh beast, who was also the first beast. And the Most High makes it so easy for us to determine who the beast is, because we know that Pharaoh was the seed of Ham, and there has only been one U.S. president that is of the seed of Ham. 
So his number is number 44, and that also equals eight. And this is the judgment on the nations for what they have done to the children of Israel. That judgment is written in Joel chapter 3, verse 8. That is, they're going to be given over to the Sabians, the one who is coming. And this also connects to moon god worship. And we know who worships the moon. This is their leader. What? The National Guard will be deployed for total solar eclipse on April 8th. Why? Why does the National Guard need to be deployed for a solar eclipse? What's so concerning? I mean, all right, you had me a little with the uh, keeping the kids away from school. I was like, why would you do that? It's only a solar eclipse, but whatever, okay. And, and, and now the National Guard needs to be deployed. And you know, on top of that, what's the deal with stocking up on food and making sure your batteries are all charged? Like, what do they think is gonna happen during this solar eclipse? I mean, I thought it was just the moon goes in front of the sun, it gets a little dark and everything is fine. I, I don't understand why we need the National Guard, why we need to shut down schools, why we need to stock on supplies, and why do we need our batteries fully charged for an eclipse? What the hell's going on? What is up with this? Why is, why are schools closing for a solar eclipse? We had one back in 27, 2016, 2017. No school shut down. They just took an hour and went outside and watched it. And they handed out glasses and all kinds of stuff. Why are they closing schools? Texas, Ohio, I'm sure North Carolina's probably going to close school because, but it, it begs to question, do they know something that we don't know? And are preparing because they expect something to happen or are they going to be the reason something happens those of you that have time to investigate dig into this a little bit more let me know what you come up with i don't have time because i gotta go to work but i would be interested to see what everybody has to say because this just doesn't make sense to me at all like this just bizarre anyway have a good day another planet and the entire thing goes into chaos mode and doesn't work and can never predict what's going to happen next but if you go out tonight with all the billions of stars in our galaxy and all the planets and, and moons and everything check them out where they are at a certain time tonight next year same night same time even though we're billions of miles away corkscrewing through space nothing changes every single star will be in the exact same position the chances of a moon and a sun 400 times bigger 400 times farther eclipsing each other perfectly is one in infinity, okay? And, okay, Man. and they happen all the time. And after that, did you know that eclipses, the cycle of eclipses repeat every 18 years? Every 18 years, they do the same thing again and again and again. That's impossible in a beehive gravitational bullshit model. Solar eclipses keep on getting weirder. Texas County declares a state of emergency ahead of total solar eclipse. Ohio is spending $1 million on eclipse security for 2024. What is it for? What these articles are stating is that through the path of totality, population is going to at least double with tourist population of people from outside of town coming into town to view this total solar eclipse. Um, both in Texas and Ohio, um, certain counties have said that their populations are going to double from 400,000 to 800,000 folks. Schools across the U.S. give date off a 2024 solar eclipse. This was reported three months ago, but we've been hearing this news since November last year. Not only it, if you can't catch the show from the ground, I got something for you for the air. Delta Airlines, amongst other airlines, I'll fill you in, wants to fly you through the 2024 total solar eclipse from 30,000 feet in the air. But unfortunately, all of these flights were sold out within the hour. For my numerologist enthusiast, this flight is Airbus A220-300. Do not fret, because if you got $1,000, you can afford these $1,000 plane tickets for 30 hours of travel, all to see four minutes of the total solar eclipse from a window seat. How about that? The vibe for April 8th is no school. Some states are declaring a state of emergency. emergency. You can catch a flight and watch this total solar eclipse. First time in my life that I ever heard about that. 
But when you take into account esoteric knowledge, First Nations knowledge, occult knowledge, um, spiritual knowledge, when, it, when you take into account what the total solar eclipse is and the possibilities during it, I don't think you'll be like moths to the light, if you know what I'm saying. I think you'll take a little bit more precaution because this is a time for change, but it's a good time. So stay vibrating high. I'll catch you next time. Make sure you get your receipt. If you've watched this far, get your receipt, like, save, and follow. Three days of darkness. Let me tell you everything that I know, and Lord knows I do not want to make this video. I don't like to speculate, and I'm not given to internet conspiracy theories, but I have something that I have to tell you. I do see something here. I've been seeing it here for a long time. It's time to come clean. I moved my family out of Alaska because of a gut feeling. Wasn't the only reason, it was just the first one that caused me to look for all the rest. Maybe it's silly, maybe none of this is true, but it bothered me so bad that I moved my family out of Alaska. This article was ran by Forbes over six years ago and can only help you speculate. This is the Edgar Casey map, a clairvoyant communing with demons to see the future. Potentially total garbage, only I don't think it is because this makes some kind of sense to me that I cannot explain. Now until very recently, and I mean this month, I did not know that there was a correlation between total solar eclipses and devastating earthquakes. And now that I do, <sighs> the plot is getting real thick, fam. In September of 1811, a total solar eclipse took this path through the United States. And in December of 1811, the New Madrid fault line popped off in a series of devastating earthquakes that lasted all the way through into January. Now the scientists say there is increased earthquake activity in the face of new moons, a new moon being required for a total solar eclipse. There is a scientific correlation there that seems to have everything to do with causation. But it was three months after the eclipse. What's your point? If a barge goes under a bridge and hits one of the supports and damages it, there might be 2,000 vehicles roll over the bridge before it gives out, is what I'm saying. So that the new moon of a solar eclipse is like a barge passing under a bridge and hitting one of the supports. This is the path the total solar eclipse took in July 1963. Funny thing, it passed right through Talkeetna, Alaska, where my family and I lived, long before we were born. And then in March of 1964, a devastating earthquake tore Anchorage all to pieces. Solar eclipse is not an instant trigger. It's more like a fatal wound to the fault line. Doesn't mean there's gonna be a terrible earthquake after every total solar eclipse, mm -hmm. but every total solar eclipse affects the fault lines they pass over because of that new moon, scientifically. Whether I explain these events spiritually or physically, they are true both ways. It is the spiritual producing the physical. After the total solar eclipse of 1811, there was a series of devastating earthquakes followed by years of decline straight into the Great Depression. Followed by the Great Depression, did you hear? Do total solar eclipses just mean earthquakes? No, they affect more than just fault lines. They warn of much more than just earthquakes. Look, if I could make this stuff up out of my own mind, I'd be God, get it? But instead, look at us, us little bitty babies just learning about his creation, don't even know how it works. So, rut row, what the stink is that converging right over top of the New Madrid Fault? I mean, can you say X marks the spot? What is going on there? This is the path of the solar eclipse from August 21st of 2017. Well, nothing happened after that one, did it? It didn't warn of anything at all. Y'all forget about COVID and every single thing that has happened to our country since then? That wasn't enough to get your attention, get your minds right? Well, this is the path of that solar eclipse that's about to happen on April 8th. And the very spot where it crosses the path of the last one is the new Madrid fault line. Y'all don't see that right there? If you do not believe in God and only believe in science, that right there is alarming, bruh. And I mean, call the National Guard. See if they can stop it. <laughs> Time for a Bible punch in the mouth. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Y'all think that's a random coincidence? This is the scientific prediction should that fault line pop off. 
Should that new Madrid fault line pop off right there, this is the prognosticator's view of what the future topography of the United States of America is gonna look like. Now, I'm not saying that this is gonna happen at all, only that it would make great and terrible sense to me if it did. I am no authority on this subject as far as men are concerned. I got two years of videos you can scroll though and decide for yourself whether I have authority and where it might be from. And still, that's not to say that this is true or false. Only that it makes sense to me, but who am I? The scientists have no authority whatsoever to tell us how it's actually going to happen, and neither do I know exactly how it's gonna play out in the details. We are all speculating on what exactly it's going to be. It is God who is in control of what it will be. But he gave us plenty of potential to consider in the face of world history. In March of 2011, a 9.1 undersea megathrust earthquake occurred in the Pacific Ocean, 72 miles off the coast of Japan. In July of 2010, there was a total solar eclipse that passed over the Pacific. Why would this affect Japan at all? Oh snap, this is the ring of fire and that total solar eclipse went exactly this way. And that megathrust earthquake hit Japan this way. Oh, there's a pattern, a recurring series of events here. A pattern I did not know when I got the gut feeling to move my family out of Alaska. Not that that counts for anything. Except with me, I trust my gut. Did you know if they knew all the variables, they could predict all of the earthquakes too? It's on a schedule. What's funny is when I made that first sign of Jonah video, I wasn't thinking about any of this at all. Not considering this as a potential for anything, I was thinking World War III is on our doorstep, you know, and it is. The economy goes down, maybe a new round of disease, which thing is pestilence. Oh, snap, if pestilence followed the 2017 eclipse, is there some way to know where we are on the timeline of what it mean, what eclipses mean, or you know, what's following them specifically, each one? Probably, I haven't looked at that yet, but I'm pretty sure it, you know, you'd find it. Cause wouldn't that make sense? Three days of darkness, as we're all hearing about it, is based on a false private prophecy wherein in three days of darkness, the Catholic Church's enemies will all be destroyed. And that might sound good on the surface, but they got that whole idea from the Bible to begin with, and men have been making false prophecies out of stuff they got in the Bible this whole time. Internet conspiracies also need not apply because they're so chock full of disinformation, it's hard to sort it out, you know? Three Days of Darkness was one of the plagues that descended on Egypt during the Exodus. Precluding the Exodus. Does that mean we're about to get an Exodus? I stinking hope so, I really do. Does it mean we're gonna get a revival? Well, man, that's what I would surely love. Does 2024 is gonna be very chaotic. It's gonna be weird. There's some weird movies coming out. I mean, you guys saw, saw the recent movie, Leave the World Behind. Anybody saw that movie there? Oh, okay, yeah, you know all these, what are you, Am I watching a movie or is this a documentary realistic thing? And then I'm seeing Mark Zuckerberg just spent $100 million building a house in Hawaii with a nuclear bunker. What does he know that the rest of the world doesn't know about? Talk about the timing. Oh, accidentally, coincidentally, a week after that movie comes out, a new movie comes out. What's the name of that movie? Civil War. Civil War. Leave the world behind. Our power grid in America hasn't been updated. 75% of it hasn't been updated in 50 years. And you're kind of talking about that. Then you're pinning whites against blacks. There's a line in the movie that says, Dad, you know if something goes down, we can't trust these white people. I know that's something both you and Mom agree on. Why do you put that line in the movie, Barack? And you were helping with the script. Why would you put that in the movie? Why would you put that in the movie? Barack, weren't you the same guy that gave a talk at the DNC in 2004 about bringing people together? What happened to that guy?